Michael Thomas is out. Obviously, mm -hmm. you lost Devin and Evan. Just where does your unit stand right now? You know what? We're working to get better, obviously. It's, it's a lot like any other year that we've been here. I mean, trying to take that next step as a group. I mean, it's it it, it doesn't help having guys dinged up like Mike or Don Trey and, and, and obviously a couple other guys that aren't practicing. But I feel good about the, the reps that the other guys are getting. I mean, it's giving guys opportunities to improve that, that maybe wouldn't have gotten as many opportunities as they would have. So we're, we're getting there. Who of the young guys has really emerged? We're starting to emerge. Uh, Noah Brown's probably had the best, as good a spring as, as I could have wanted. I mean, he's dropped 25 pounds, and I mean, he's he's on a different level than he was in the fall. And so I'm really, really pleased with where he, he's at. I mean, he's come he's come a long way, and he, he's still got a little bit of work to do, but but he's looking like a guy that's going to contribute heavily in the fall. Uh, and then, then young guys like Paris Campbell and, and, and Terry McLaurin, are still, they're still working. They're, they're, every day they're going out, and I mean, they leave practice blown out because they're, I mean, they're grinding to get better. Uh, they're not there yet. But there's, every now and then they show a flash or a promise where you say, all right, in the fall, by the fall, I think we can get this guy ready to play. Front row, Kim. Yeah, Tim, Mike, Clemson, Spanish. Is that, uh, have y'all, uh, with Curtis Samuel, does he meet with you a lot uh, yeah. in your room? How, talk about his progress a little bit. What, what have you seen out of him? Does it look like he can play that spot? Well, yeah, Curtis is really talented. Curtis could play a, a lot of different spots. I mean, I, I'm there's very few that he couldn't. So he's he's been meeting in my room, kind of trying to saturate him with with this position just so we have more flexibility to utilize him back in the backfield, out of the backfield in the slot. And, I mean, that's not something you could just dip your toe in and, 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 and test the waters. That's something you got to dive in full force. I mean, he had a full year at running back to really work those skills. And so we, we took him this spring and said we're going to give him a full spring at receiver so we could try to develop that skill set so he becomes more uh, – multi-talented and, and, and we can use him in more uh, more ways. And, uh, uh, Jalen Marshall, is, uh, is he seeing some looks at other spots besides hybrid back? I mean, how, what, what do you Yeah, think? I moved Jalen outside for just for the spring. I mean, I, I, the way our defense plays so much press man on the outside, I, want, I wanted Jalen to go in and get that work on the outside. I wanted him to get press man work because that's something that he you don't get a lot of in the slot. And I think to take his game to the next level, that was that was a critical piece. I don't think he's going to play out there, though he has the flexibility to move out there. He um, He's getting a good 15 practice block of press man against guys like Eli, guys like Gary on, you know, getting getting that great work that, that he would have otherwise, otherwise missed out of in the slot. Oh, he's not Trey. What's he doing? Uh, Dontre, we, we have a great plan for Dontre. I mean, obviously, he can't do anything mobily. He can't run. He can't run routes or anything like that. But we do a lot of ball skills. I mean, he has a kind of a custom. A lot, him and a lot of guys, him and Johnny Dixon, him and James Clark, Mike Thomas, they do a lot of uh, – Ball, ball drills, ball skill development things, and, and even when they do rehab, they're in the underwater uh, treadmill running and, and getting their cardio in. They're not just running in a treadmill. I mean, they're catching balls as they do it. So, so we have a very detailed plan for injured guys that can't necessarily get the work on the field, but just kind of a specialized rehab treatment program for them. Front row, Oscar. Zach, it seems like the last couple of years, Dontre had a year running back, then you guys integrated him into the, your group a little bit more safety for Curtis. Is it just these two, or is this a – a trend or something that you want to you know, maybe do with a guy every year? Yeah, I mean, that's, I, at the end of the day, we're going to get the best players on the field. So it really depends on how recruiting goes and who we bring in. Uh, we're not going to have a guy like Curtis sit on the bench because Zeke's the running back and just have him play 10 snaps a game. We're going to get him on the field as much as he earns. So uh, Dontre was in that situation with Carlos Hyde, and then Zeke came in. And so Dontre, we weren't going to keep him off the field, so we moved him to receiver. Now, now Curtis, we're, I think, in an ideal world, he's going to play both. The ability to go in in the backfield when Zeke's not in or play in the slot when Zeke is in. And so we're developing that skill set. Does he stay there? I don't think so. But but I guess, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, so we'll see. But that's that's something that we like to have the ability to do. We like recruiting those hybrid guys that can play both, both so they can come out of the slot and, and we can hand them a ball, and also so they can motion out of the backfield and do things on the perimeter that, you know, a traditional tailback doesn't do. I mean, it's just a different world. I mean, guys don't understand the position coming from a different one. Jalen Marshall went through it when he came from quarterback to receiver. Dontre went through it. Curtis is going through it. And so that's why we're trying to saturate him now, as opposed to come in fall camp, say, shoot, we need to get him on the field. Let's put him at receiver a little bit. Then, then you're really 
you know, you're trying to give him a small skill set. We don't want to give him a small skill set. We want to open the offense up to him and ha- him be able to be efficient at all of it. So that's that's what we're trying to do right now. And um, th- there's definitely a lot of learning curve. I mean, probably the biggest is just how much we run on the out there because the running backs, you know, they go two, three plays, and then they're getting a sub. There's only one of them on the field. And Curtis looked at me after the first day and was like, whew, this is real out here, a wide out. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a different world, both in conditioning and, and how we play the position and, and, and the physical skill set and endurance you need to do it. Front row left, Doug. You said you're having, you have Jalen outside now, but you don't imagine him mm-hmm. staying there in the fall. What, why, why do you like him more in the slot? What would it be, what would the possibilities be of maybe him staying outside? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a similar situation with why is Curtis meeting with the receivers. I mean, it's, Jalen can play outside, and, and so he's going to have a full spring of doing that, so if we need to or want to, we can. But, we're going to get the best six wideouts or seven wideouts in the rotation. So where he fits in that is really where we best see him fitting. And, and right, he left the year as the starting H and the best H we had, There's the hybrid, the slot receiver. So I'm not going to put him outside just because we can if he's the best one in the slot. Now, maybe we come out of fall camp and say – He's one of the best three, and there's a different guy in the slot, and he's outside. Sure, that could happen. And we, the flexibility is what I'm training for, is the ability to get him outside if that's what Ohio State needs, if that's what our offense needs. And it's also going to help him because the slot will occasionally get pressed. I mean, you, you watch it in even some of our games against Alabama and teams like that where they did press the slot, and he's, he was okay at it, but he wasn't great at it. So I'm trying to get him great at it. So even if he is in the slot, he can be dynamic in any situation. We're talking with Dontre like during the playoff last year. You know, he seemed like he kept talking like, "Oh, I'm, I'm going to play against Alabama," and then I went, "Oh, I'm going to play mm-hmm. against Oregon," and now it didn't happen. And now we're here in the spring, and he's not. Are you concerned at all about? His no, I mean, we we kind of knew going down the stretch towards the end that Dontre had was probably going to need another surgery. I mean, it, it didn't heal great, and and so. He was able to go, but he was one play away from re-breaking it. And so we were very tentative at putting him in the game. I mean, he was live. I got him in the Oregon game for, I think, three snaps, mainly just because I felt like he deserved to go out on the field in that game because he helped us get there. And he was, and he was able to, to do anything, but he just wasn't comfortable on his foot yet, probably mainly because he needed another surgery. So in, if we got in a bind, a guy gets hurt or two guys get hurt, he could have played until something happened. But it was kind of inevitable that it, it was either going to happen or he was going to need a surgery. So I feel great about it now because he got the, he got the surgery. It looks great. It's healing great. And we, we're sticking to the plan so that he can be healthy by fall. And just sorry for one more, but what we saw of Johnny last year mm-hmm. and then the injury is there. Is he ready to be a number, a full-time starting receiver at Ohio State, or are there things he has to do first to be that kind of player? I mean, John, Johnny has the skill set, and, and we see it's kind of like some of these young guys. You see flashes every now and then. He just got to get healthy. Uh, he's not ready, but I would hope he wouldn't be ready because he hasn't really been been through a full – he went through spring, and then he we, we really felt good about where he was at, and then he was dinged up the rest of fall. And so he came back and, and started off real strong and then kind of got re-dinged. And so we're just – our whole goal and mentality right now is get him healthy, get him to 100%, and then let's get him ready because he's going to be ready. He has, he has everything there to get ready to go be a guy that we can count on, but he's just – we haven't had him healthy to do that yet. Front row middle. Uh, Zach, does it help hurt, hinder the – growth of the receivers not having any you know clarity at quarterback right now with you know, guys all working in there how, how does that work no I mean I I think it's I said it all last year it's kind of whoever's whoever's taking a snap we're, we're gonna do what we do and, and they're all very similar they have different skill sets but it doesn't change how we do anything so at the end of the day it, the, every wide out has a one-on-one battle at some point in a route in a in a you know, perimeter run, whatever it is, they have a one-on-one. They got to win the one-on-one. Now, if the ball is a little high, a little low, a little harder, a little softer, I mean, that's something that you kind of get adjusted to as you're getting ready for a game. But that's not something that changes how we operate. So it's it's they're they're great with whoever's back there right now, and and, and always have been. And, and I mean, to be honest, it's a heck of a problem to have for them because they know whoever's back there is really good. <laughs> you mentioned does it does it change things like when? Braxton throws a ball versus Cardell versus JT. They all throw different balls. So how much of an adjustment is it from a wideout's perspective? It's not a lot of adjustment. I mean, they, they go through. I mean, obviously Braxton's not throwing right now, but JT and Cardell are throwing. And, I mean, they're, it's not like they're only catching balls from Cardell or only catching balls from JT. I mean, they're they're working with both. So they, they get accustomed to each other 
just through repetition. And so once Braxton's back and throwing, the same thing will naturally happen over the summer. They'll go out and throw routes and, and then in two a days and things like that. They will get accustomed to, to who the guy is and, and and really, it's more for the quarterback getting accustomed to how Jalen Marshall runs this certain route and feeling comfortable with it and having that chemistry. So they get the reps to, to have that chemistry. And you saw it last year. I mean, JT goes down, Cardale comes in, and the chemistry is phenomenal. And it wasn't because all of a sudden that week they started catching some balls from Cardale. I mean, they do it constantly. What do you think it'll be like, just one more, what do you think it'll be like for some of those young guys who came here and Braxton was this, is this legend that they really haven't gotten a chance to play with mm -hmm. when he's actually – out there and, and they're able to play with them. What will it be like for those young guys to, to do that? I mean, I, th I think it, it, it's it's going to be phenomenal for them. I mean, they, they a lot of them came here because they knew Braxton Miller's this, you know, Heisman candidate, two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, and so that they love him and they love him as a player, and, and they're they're excited to get him back on the field for sure. They can't wait for him to get back out there and, and do what he does. Zach, is Noah Brown, by the way, working at several spots, or is he primarily working? Yeah, Noah's worked all spots. He's working. He's right now at X just because Mike's out, and and that. Not saying he can't be the X because he certainly can. He's done a great job this spring, but um, he played in the slot all last year. He played outside a little bit because he started showing that he could get on the field. And now I moved him to the boundary this this spring. But he's even this spring when Mike was practicing and some of these guys that are ding now that weren't. He was I was moving him around a bunch, and I told him going into spring. The mentality right now is to get you ready to start at all three spots, so that he, he's kind of like Jalen. He has that flexibility so that. When we need to get the best three on the field, whoever that is, I can plug them where I need to, and, and they'll be really good at it. Two more questions for Zach. Matt, far left. Um, just kind of building off of what Todd was asking. I know you're not working directly with the quarterbacks, but Coach Meyer mentioned at the start of the spring with JT and Braxton's situation, he wanted to see Cardale still say he was like a raw rookie despite what we saw. Right. Wanted to see him get a million reps this spring. I'm just wondering from your perspective, what kind of the spring, now that we're about halfway through or more than – what kind of spring is he having? Uh, you know what? He, he's he's developing. I mean, he's coming along. I mean, just never mind. I mean, he's always had the skill set. He's always been really intelligent and, and has a good football IQ. But but just things like, you know, leading guys, getting frustrated when a guy drops a ball or a right guard misses a protection. I mean, he's he, grabbing them and saying, you know, come on, let's go. You got to do this. You got to do that. And 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 explaining to to Stephen Collier like listen this is this was the coverage do that you just saw you see him step out more as a leader than he had in the past because he was kind of in the back seat just trying to you know stay active and stay engaged and and so you see that which is really good to see but but as far as a quarterback yeah he's he's gotten better over the whatever nine practices we've had but um you see more intangible stuff coming uh, off the you know kind of away from the play than you do on the field <clears throat> Coach Meyer came in here last week and talked about you guys kind of searching, trying to identify your top playmakers uh, mm -hmm. this spring. Just wondering, how do you kind of coach playmaking? Is that something that can be taught? <laughs> is it like an innate skill set, or is it something you guys consciously try to build? In it's a, it was a magic potion we give out, actually. <laughs> no, um, it's, it's really just teaching them how to run a route, teaching them the concept. Once they understand the offense and defense, they just got have to go execute. And then it's a matter of when the, you know, it's like anything else. When the bright lights are on, you know it's your time to make the play. Do you make the play? Because it's if you can't do it in practice when you know it's coming and the spotlight's on you, you, you aren't going to do it in the national championship game or the Big Ten championship. you you're, it's, you got to see it there first. So it's really just the opportunity, giving them an opportunity and trying to see them shine. And then you do that and they start to become more consistent and then all of a sudden you feel like they're ready to go out on prime time and go do it. So we got to see them do it here first. So it's more opportunity than anything. I mean, they, certainly they have to be coached and understood, uh, coached how to do it and understand when it's their time to shine but once that's done you got to see them do it put them in the situation and let them you know sink or swim